Hello, humans. Speaking of humans, stay tuned for a really, really cool episode today on Less Code, More Power about human-centric experience. Hello, and welcome back, everyone, to Less Code, More Power. You know you missed us terribly. I'm Donna Sarkar, my co-host. Sarah Critchley. And today we have got an amazing guest for all of you. You're welcome. This is Sangya from the PAR platform team. Sangya, please introduce yourself for the audience. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm Sangya Singh. I'm the Chief Experience Officer for PAR platform, and I'm super excited to be here with Donna and Sarah. So thank you for inviting me. Of course, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. So Sangya is actually one of the busiest people on the PAR platform <laughs> because of her job being a chief experience officer. And some of you might wonder, what is that and how do I get that job? So uh, Sangya, can you tell us a little bit more about what does that mean, actually? So um, uh, maybe I'd step back a little bit and really talk about uh, who I am. So. Yeah. Uh, I've been at Microsoft for about 19 years as an engineering and product leader, and and basically I take on products and teams which need to, in an enterprise uh, space, really innovate, right? A large scale innovation. And the way I have, it's not the what, it's the how I do things. The way I evolve a product and innovate a product in a large scale is really through product strategy and product experiences. And throughout these years, I've created a brand for myself uh, as a product leader to be an innovative leader that leads with user experiences, whether it's an experience our users find us, you know, when they get to our public sites, whether it's in the products, whether it's for the community or support. And so last October, I joined uh, Charles Lamana's Power Platform engineering team uh, to really help take the Power Platform to the next level uh, from Endpoint. And uh, that's where I got my title, Chief Experience Officer. And I lead a cross-discipline team of product managers and engineers. That sounds amazing. Wow. Like kind of, it's, it must be from a... From a product perspective, it must be so nice bringing the human element out of the, out of kind of the product, right, and sharing that with people. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think what I've learned through lots of trials and triumphs throughout these, uh, you know, 18 years at Microsoft, leading really large products like SharePoint or Outlook or, or now Power Platform, is there are a couple patterns that I've learned just works. And, you know, one of them is product strategy pattern called discovery-based planning. And then the second one is a development process called human-centered design um, process. And so I have, every time I've applied that with a product, how do you design with design thinking human-centered and how do you do strategy? That is not a big bang strategy to totally rechange, but really discovery-based strategy, taking your users along the journey. I've had good successes, um, and so, um, yeah. That's that is amazing. That's, yeah. Um, one of the things that I've noticed in all of our conversations is the word you use the most is human. And yeah. always about how we build for the specific human. And we hardly ever talk about the nitty gritties of tech. We always talk about how do we build for this set of humans or that set of humans or bring humans along on your journey? So that's why I thought it was super exciting when all of the the community aspects of Power Platform, they've become your responsibility and charter of you and your team. And I think that's incredibly powerful because especially now, the way people learn is from each other. Yeah. So, um, and that's one of the reasons I'm insanely excited to have you here with us today, because you are more in touch with what people need right now than anyone else, I think, at Microsoft, because you spend your entire time thinking about what do humans need, not in 10 years, not in 15 years, but right now to solve their specific business problems. So Sangya never leads with, here's our roadmap and we need to go <laughs> It. It's always, what do humans need right now in this month to solve their specific unique problems that they run into? I think that's, that's so, really powerful. Yeah, I, I think you, you've given me a lot of credit. <laughs> uh, but but, but in, in essence, I think at the foundation level, it's what we've realized is like, it's 
um, solution in tech is a means to something, right? So if you really spend time, not just go into, oh my God, there's so much bugs here. I, if I did this feature, people are asking for this feature, you know, you can go down this path, which is great. And, and the product does well. But if you really step back for anything and you spend time with the person that hires your product for or fires your product for, right? Um, they have some, if you spend time with developing empathies around what their ambition and their fears and frustrations are, if you have that context and you can truly make the right decisions in the product, keeping that in mind. So that user empathy is the foundation. If you don't spend time understanding that, um, you know, where the makers are today, you know, uh, and just imagining the world five years from now. No, 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 no. That's where they are today. They want to solve problems today. And that's what their ambitions are and their frustrations are and fears. I think you can really create something magical. I have a question on that. That's, you know, I've got so many questions. This is crazy. I'm having to organize them in like a nice little library right now. So one of the things, how do you, like, there's so much there and, and I love all this. I love anything related to that human, you know, the human element. How do you manage so many things? Like say, for example, you were going into that kind of engagement and there's all this kind of thing, you know, all that stuff going on. What do you prioritize first? Yeah, so the one thing that's really good, that, that's where the strategy comes in. So you have to mix the thing of, oh, I'm I'm human, I understand. But then as a product, product strategy, what do I focus on today? That's where uh, maybe I'll provide you links into um, what, what's called discovery-based planning. It was about 10 to 12 years ago, um, there's an industry leader called Rita Magritte. Um, she's a um, professor at Columbia. She she talked about how enterprises should prioritize and build um, these one small thing at a time. So the whole prioritization framework and product strategy um, is something that is known. It's patterned, and I always I teach that uh, <clears throat> to to the uh, the PM leaders that that work with me. It's uh, so yeah. So that helps you with now that I know what the humans need, the users need, too. But how do I fail forward fast, right? What is the product strategy? What do I first do and then get more data? Because learning starts by shipping. So you can keep imagining, let's start with the most, most important stuff. So that prioritization framework, put it out there, get more data from the users and evolve that to an amazing platform and platform that is very unique to, for example, Microsoft. I would do product strategy very different if I was working for Google or Amazon or Microsoft. So the product strategy that really makes it not only good for the users and the company, but it makes it sticky for, for us and really differentiate. So those are the two big things I tell people. Human-centered design and discovery-based planning is what creates the magic. Does that That's make amazing. sense? Yeah. So speaking of human-centered design, we heard a lot of people have been reaching out to you during this time and asking for specific solutions to specific problems. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you've been working on, you and your team? So, um, and that's also part of the demo that I will end up showing. So, as uh, both of you know, like um, this month, U.S. enters like the fourth month of this pandemic, right, which is accompanied by economic downturn and frankly, working from home routine. And so um, starting in March, when this started, uh, we had hospitals reach out to, to us where, you know, they wanted to manage capacity, right? Uh, and so we worked with them to create a hospital solution. And then I'm going to share a little bit about then the, the state governments reached out to say it's not about managing capacity at a hospital level. I need to coordinate at a state level. How do I do that? I'm running on spreadsheets and, and Excel stuff. That's where Power Platform comes in because you can quickly stand up something, right? And so those are the things that March and April we were working on that I'll give you a sneak peek into and then primarily show you what we are working on next, which is really organizations around the world. Uh, this has like not happened to us in 100 years, right? Have been shut down. Now they want to come back and reopen in a scaled way. And so how can Power Platform really help there? So I'll give you a sneak peek. Sounds amazing. That. Ooh, okay, that I can't wait to see. This this return to work thing I haven't even seen yet, so I'm very, very interested. Every company is going to go through this, every single freaking company. Yes, so I am yes. So and that's why I'm nervous. It's, 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 the bar is really high. <laughs> <laughs> like you know there's as a product leader it's like oh my god everybody's waiting for this but at the same time um it's like it's it's yes it's fast to do it but i'm not gonna am i gonna get everything right we'll find out oh 
there's no way to do it right. We've never had, exactly. Yeah. 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 None of us have returned to work in a digital first world. Yes. Well, yes. Pandemic before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so show us what you what you brought. Awesome. So let me just quickly show you some of the solutions that I was talking about that we've released uh, since March. Um, and then I'll go into a, a, a working life demo of what we're working on next. So as I talked about, like um, around in March and April timeframe, uh, we created um, healthcare um, resource and tracking solutions. So the first one we did was when hospitals around the world, so let's just imagine a hospital called Alpine Healthcare that have multiple facilities, right? Um, this is a very classic one. We worked with a local hospital, Swedish hospital, uh, that had multiple facilities across um, uh, um, Seattle area. And they really wanted to coordinate all these critical uh, uh, resources across all their facilities. Where where are the COVID-19 patients coming up? And, you know, where is the bed capacity? Who has the ventilators and the supplies, right? So this was their problem statement. And we quickly worked with them and using PAR platform, we created a really uh, great um, uh, solution that was made up of, uh, you know, for the frontline uh, workers like the uh, registered nurses, uh, a app, because as you can imagine, they are on the floor working through stuff, an app where they can quickly enter information about the bed capacity and the equipments. And then we also had um, all this information from all these frontline workers working at different um, facilities uh, for that hospital was all feeding into one common data model, CDS model, that uh, hospital level um, administrators could really, really see where where the beds are, where the patients are, where the supplies are, and really make a, a really great operational um, decisions on a daily basis for the hospitals. So again, a super robust solutions made up of Power Apps and Power BI and Power Automate, everything coming together. I the next that. one um, uh, solution that we had was Sure, there we were working with the hospital that have five facilities, but the Washington State has 115 hospitals. So the Washington State level, a regional level lead, for example, for Washington is Governor Inslee. They have to decide across the 105 hospitals, where are the patients and where do I need to route the resources, right? And so we started working with Governor Inslee and his uh, Vice Admiral Bono uh, coordinator who was trying to solve this problem. And they were running again on spreadsheets and, and sticky notes. And again, Power Platform came in and when we started to work with them. In this case, we, we, we did a portal experience where hundred no, registered nurses from 115 hospitals could just log into this Washington state level um, uh, portal and enter how many patients, how many bed capacity, why? So at the state level, they can actually see at a glance where everything is, right? Where the bed capacity is by county, by hospital. Um, and say so they today they use it on a, a you know daily basis, this dashboard um, uh, on a daily basis to kind of see where the need is. You can imagine tomorrow there's an outbreak again in some county. They'll be able to see a, a surge in, in, in those patients and um, they will be able to route it. Um, again, these are unprecedented times and people don't have systems around it. So here, my biggest learning was, oh my God, Power Portal is so amazing from the standpoint of, I could have not created a app that 115 hospitals had to download and do it. But Power Portal, we were able to do it. The magic of Power Portal and Power BI was amazing too. So now I want to just shift really quickly to the next set of solutions that we are working on is organizations around the world, as you know, large organizations where they have um, offices around the world, they've all shut down, people are working remotely, but slowly, slowly, the facilities are actually opening up, right? But they're opening up in limited capacity. So organizations want a solution in place where they can start to manage that. This last slide here, and basically the solution is a very robust solution. It will have capabilities like 
uh, using Power Platform. It's a full Power Platform solution. It will have the following four capabilities, and then I will demo the, the second one, the app. It will have um, a, a Power Platform model apps, Power BI command center, where facility managers, you know, that building facility managers can really say, hey, I want to open up to have 20% employees come in, 30% capacity come in. What is that whole process? That's the first module. The second module is the employees will have an app when they want to go into a facility. How do they attest to no symptoms that they have, right? What is that management like? What is that experience like? The third one is when you do have employees that are under investigations because they have symptoms or because a family members has that, what can an organization use to manage those cases? So we have a module around that. And then lastly, um, uh, we are working on once the facility is open, they have to maintain very strict safety and health um, experiences, uh, protocols. So again, Power Platform comes in with its power of model apps and portal and Power BI to quickly allow the frontline workers in the facility to make sure the right uh, protocols, the checklist, the, the kitchens are all cleaned and so on and so forth. So with that, I will show you um, maybe an experience around um, what the employees at this organization that will deploy the solution what that experience would be like. This is a, a Power App um, uh, experience that can be very easily pinned in Teams if you happen to have Teams. So imagine I'm Janice. I have this app where um, this is a return back to work app where I have capabilities like um, if I want to go into work, most of the time the new norm is I am going to for the next lots of several months till the time all of us are vaccinated. I am most of the time going to work from home. But the day I decide to go into a reopen facility, what is that experience going to be like, right? So I am going, I, I'll have capabilities to check in. I can look up, maybe I want to work from one campus versus the other. I can look up a facility status. Is it open? Is it not open? I can also provide sentiment to my organization. Do I feel safe going back? Even though it's open, do I feel safe going back? So all of these capabilities are available to the employees. Behind the scene, there's a CDS model that captures it. And amazing Power BI dashboard for the organization facility to know how many employees are really going in, how many are working from home, and, and do they what the sentiment and the well-being sentiment is. So let me take you through, um, imagine I clicked on, I want to go into a facility, I clicked on check-in, I get to choose the building, it defaults to my, you know, my building, and I, I, I say I express an intent of going into building 101, and then I basically have to attest to health. So when I go in, I'm going to show you a happy path and then the alternate path. So let's just imagine going in, I have no symptoms and I pick on no fever, no cough. I pick, I say none. I have no fever. I say, yep, yeah, that's my fever. There are some other COVID-19 related symptoms. I attest to I have none of these. I press none. And then what I get is I get a day pass. For June 8th, uh, I say I have a pass um, that I get uh, and that has a timer run out. So maybe there are only 12 hours um, left for the day and I see that. When I go back and close it, basically on on the on the home screen, my home screen actually changes with that pass. I can tap on it anytime. Let's say I go into building 101, and the security asks and says, "Hey, have you attested to it?" I can quickly tap on it and show them the pass. Maybe I have two hours left or three hours left, and and but it is a day's pass. And when the day passes and I want to go in again, I have to attest to it again. Now let me show you what if I had symptoms and I, I what would that experience be? So may, I do say I have either fever or cough and you know maybe my temperature is more than the guideline is more than 100.4. If you have temperature, I show temperature, I have other symptoms. And what that does is that basically does not give you a pass. Um, it, it, it kind of tells you, you know, you've got symptoms, you should really stay home and work uh, from home. And the experience that you have on the home screen is that you, for that day, because you had assigned a symptom, you have said you have symptoms, you kind of get this, um, the, the, the icon here that says tap. And then if you tap on it, you, there's really not a day pass for you anymore because you have symptoms around it. 
So um, that's we still working on it. So that's the experience. Oh. From the employee perspective how amazing does this look you know one of the things it just looks crazy good but one of the yeah. things that I really liked from the from the earlier part of the story um yeah. was that you you kind of did what you said you do right so you started out with one hospital and then you yeah. took it you took it bigger and I think like that if you know from especially from an enterprise perspective that just shows you know how possible it is yeah yeah and what's amazing is you know, whether it was hospital or state governments or organization now, how fast a low-code uh, app development and a low-code automation platform like, like Power Platform can really, really help organizations um, build something not only fast, but also adapted, right? Because we are all learning how things are scaling up and, you know, how we would shut down again if there's an outsurge. And a platform like Power Platform allows you to do that without year months of 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 development i like that you've given up a solution given them a solution that is not just for what's happened right now but for what any crisis that can come up in the future where yes. it's it's just this new set of tools that we didn't know existed called crisis tools yeah and this is a category that didn't exist a year ago right it just it just didn't and you've been able to create using low code platform things that people now look at and they're like, yep, now we can apply this to so many other cases. And now that they've gotten rid of the whole Excel spreadsheet sticky notes, I'm sure their imaginations are just wild thinking about all of the other things they can operationalize and make more efficient, even when we're not necessarily in crisis. So yeah. think about all the think about like nonprofits, right? Think about the like when other things go on in the world, and and I guess we've been in such a privileged position. I, I guess I know that from from where I am, um, and uh, you know we just don't have any concept of what other what other things go on in the world. And I just think other non for profits in any kind of whatever they're trying to do, whatever they're trying to help, I think things like this would be so just amazing for them. Yeah, I think you both nailed it. I'm just one, my team and, you know, Microsoft is just one set of folks that are in this in this time using Power Platform and creating these solutions. And like Donna and you said, like uh, opening up the imagination of what's possible. But actually, I'm actually seeing other partners and like you said, nonprofit, you know, other um, consulting firms actually helping nonprofits or state government by creating so many different, you know, unemployment benefits. How do people apply for unemployment benefits? They're using portal. Like I'm seeing the use of portal like crazy. Wow. Like, so, you know, how do you, you know, blood banks are trying to see this antibody testing, you know, as you know, like within 60 days of having COVID-19, you have antibodies, right? Right. That if you donate your plasma, it can actually help with that. So there's consortium and the, again they're using power platform with power portal um, because multiple organizations need to quickly collaborate on it and so it's just not us I'm it was it's just mind-blowing around this pandemic how uh, people are digitizing um, coming together using something like power platform so I agree like the imagination has been unlocked um, the other thing I noticed about the demo that was so interesting was you really um, did the human-centered thing, the where it's not just here are five very practical things you should check for, but how do you feel about going back to work? Human-centered yeah. question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We spend a lot of time at looking into. Actually, it's the leaders that they are. They definitely want to open a facilities based on you know CDC guidelines and government guidelines. But they really, what they really care about is the employees. They really don't know, are the employees feeling safe? Because at the end, it's the safety of the employees. How do I know the pulse? So when we really talk deeply to our customers, CEOs, and 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 so again, I, I, I recruit customers, and they're like, you know, Sangya, I, I don't know the sentiment of my employees. Are they productive? Are they nervous? So we're like, yes, you can do magic AI and find data. We can, but we can also ask them. Yes. 
you know yeah, just talk to them about <laughs> right and 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 yeah so let's start with that and then i can we can get lots of things if they happen to use microsoft you know office and meetings or we have a lot of great work, workplace analytics right we can bring that aspect of it but just just ask them because there's nothing like just asking the employees like how do you feel about certain things and see what data you get and 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 then provide the data at the at the facility level for a campus at uh, the the organization level just to gather sentiments because then they it's just one of the data that the leader can decide to to make their employees feel better i think that is the tagline of the show just ask them yep right? yeah. what do your humans think about x just ask them because just, ask them. just, just kidding the just ask them that was an enlightening episode. Yeah. I've learned a ton and Sarah's like taking notes over there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this was an amazing conversation, Sangya. Thank you so yeah. much for joining no, us. It, I, I, I love, thank you for the opportunity again. You know, you're both incredible. I follow your work and so I'm, I've enjoyed it too. Thanks. Awesome. So uh, lovely viewers, you can see a whole ton of links below. So check those out, learn things, better yourself. And if you're ever wondering if your users or customers are, have questions, ask them, just ask them. What, um, what homework have you brought? So just in terms of, uh, you know, some actions for those people. So just before we close out, what kind of homework have you, have you brought along with the show? Yeah, so my biggest learning and the homework that I would love for the folks who are using Power Platform to create amazing stuff, whether it's for the organization or for the industry that they represent, or maybe a segment like students that they represent is, is the, the next time you think about a solution for your segment, for your organization or, or students, always think about whether it's a Power Apps or a portal solution, try to put apps and portal with analytics part bi because when you're collecting data and you don't do analytics it's nothing so the homework for you is next time you think about a solutions for your customers pull them together in a solution pull either power apps and 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 power bi capabilities on cds together to create incredible high value solutions or you're doing a portal or uh, and, and power bi together um, so that's the homework of how to holistically create a true power platform solutions with both yeah. analytics and power apps apply analytics to the problem i love that because without analytics it's like it's that's mm -hmm. that's like okay you're just getting data okay yeah. but but why <laughs> What are you doing with that? Yeah, what that's right. I that? love that. I love that. That is such good homework. We've not heard that one before. Sarah. Yeah, and I just just as you were saying, like even the sentiment that why would an employee tell you the sentiment? What do they have? I we actually in we we give them back the analytics of hey, here's what your emotions have been going through through weeks and months. So it's just data for them, even if they don't care about telling their corporation. Right. But if you give them the, oh, wow, you know, when this first started, I was not feeling safe. But slowly, yeah. slowly as it, or something else happened and it dipped, then you can say, why in this month my emotions dipped of not feeling safe? Maybe there was an outbreak, you know? So the data, even for me, if I'm capturing it, it's my data. So, so that is this so is wonderful. This is, that's been a fascinating conversation, my gosh. Thank you so much for you teaching and enlightening us with so much stuff. All right, everyone. Um, we've gone way over, of course, because this was amazing. Um, yeah. And we will let you all go now. Till next time, I'm and Donna. Sarah. And today our special guest was Sangya. Till next time, less code, more power. Mm -hmm.